Indiana Arts Commission Individual Advancement Program Physical Year 2020 Early Career Advisory Review Panel. I am Ruth Ann Calling, Commissioner from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Today is April 18th, and we are meeting by conference call and streaming live from a webinar. We welcome applicants who may be listening in today and would like to remind you that you are muted for this review. There is no direct contact or conversation about the evaluation and disposition of applications before, during, or after the panel meeting. At this time, I would like for the panelists and staff to introduce themselves, stating their name, occupation, and where they are from. I'll call out your name. Um, Sherry, please. Sherry, you're muted. Try that again. I'm Sherry Benuski. I teach for Purdue Fort Wayne in the English Department and Humanities, and I live in Warsaw, Indiana, in Northern Indiana. Ming. Hello, Men. my name is, yes, hello, my name is Men. I'm studying pop, public affairs and administration in graduate program, and I'm currently living in Indiana, Bloomington. Thank you. Caitlin. Yes, my name is Caitlin Smith, and I am the program manager for the Columbus Area Arts Council, and I live in Columbus, Indiana. George. Yes, my name is George Salinas. I am a uh, traveling professor in the School of in, in, uh, the Arts, is specifically dance, currently an active duty soldier with the Indiana National Guard. Jay Lisa. Hello, my name is Jalisa. Um, I am a lecturer at Arts and Festivals Management in the UK. I'm from Bloomington, but I live in England. Sherry. I think we just need to introduce Don now. I'm sorry. Okay. That's fine. This is Don Steffi, Executive Director for the Indianapolis Children's Choir. Uh, and I uh, live in Lebanon, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis. Okay. Did I get everybody, Anna? I'm Anna Tragaster, IAC staff, and that's everyone. Okay, thank you. Now we'll begin the panel review. This is how the process will work. I will announce the application and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Panelists, please note that the applications do not need to be recapped since everyone has read it. Just provide your comments. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to present any new, additional, or opposing comments. We are not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives the panelists bring to the table. After the second reader has finished, I will open discussion for the final comments. Remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new, additional, or opposing viewpoints. If a panelist has a conflict of interest, that panelist will be placed on hold while the application is reviewed. However, there are no conflicts of interest on this panel. Finally, once the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we ask the panel to update, update their scores in the online system. It is common for scores to change as a result of this broader discussion. These scores save automatically. Are there any questions? Okay, none being noted, let's begin. We'll start with the application from Adam Sita, and our first reader will be Don. Great. Uh, I'm pretty much a concise uh, panelist, so just so everybody knows that, uh, uh, don't take my conciseness as a, as a comment. Uh, the uh, Sonata samples, 
uh, that uh, were given, I, I felt seemed pretty basic and clear uh, I, uh, and would probably be good for uh, introductory and beginning level um, lectures. Uh, in the question on goals and development, the second question uh, was not answered. Uh, so point of app, you know, application process here, how will the project help you reach these goals and be specific? Uh, it, it was not there. Uh, quality, like I said, seems appropriate for beginning lectures. Uh, the public benefit uh, and the community engagement question, this was not fully answered. Uh, uh, it mentioned about exposing people to the art and just looking for a little deeper, uh, as the question said, describing uh, meaningful uh, and specific opportunities. So really expanding on more than just the exposing, what, what else uh, would have really uh, been able to be uh, created uh, to, to, uh, to have a deeper uh, and more meaningful experience with the community engagement piece. Um, and then nothing in particular uh, was, uh, was a standout but I did want to mention budget-wise, and this is minor, uh, that the 50 bucks uh, for flyers and brochures uh, did seem awfully low uh, for uh, to promote something. Those are my comments. Thank you, Don. Our second reader is Jalisa. Um, I agree with what Don has said as well, and I don't really have much to add. You kind of said everything <laughs> that I had also commented on. Great. Right. International reviewer. I love it. <laughs> Are there any new additional or opposing comments from the panelists? Okay. None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores update your online comments, and let me know if you need more time. Anyone need more time? All right, we'll move ahead. Our second applicant is Andrea Ledbetter, and our first reader is Sherry, please. I really enjoyed the intriguingness of this particular uh, application and the, the uh, new way of looking at things. Um, I was uh, con I was intrigued, but also concerned by some of the possible issues with speaking with spirits um, from a civic point of view. Um, and the the uh, I love the idea of the interactive features that she's talking about. That seems to be a wonderful way to interact with the community. Um, I the the things that she provided, the writings, the types of writings, um, weren't directly related. So I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of what exactly she would be writing for this particular audience, um, what the book might sound with sound like interactively speaking. Um, let's see here. Uh, the community consultation she mentioned seemed to be a really great idea. I'd like to know more about those um, since I don't know. She doesn't say if she's going to intend to speak with spirits while she's doing some of this or part of, as part of the book uh, that might need some more exploration. Um, and the timeline for putting together a book, although this seems like a fantastic idea, seems to be a little short for what, uh, what my experience is with putting together books and getting them published. Um, let's see here. And, and that's, those are my comments. I, I really enjoyed this idea. Before we move on, could I ask you to clarify um, the your first comment about the civic interest or civic perspective of this project in which criteria you felt like that was really related to? 
Uh, when she's talking about community involvement, she talks about um, she talks about having uh, what does she say? Let me see here. Um, let me find that. She talks about having community involvement with. Con she says she says the words community consultations uh, to increase tourist activities, and she's talking about abandoned spaces. Um, she talks a little bit about um, jumping walls and lifting man covers and going into abandoned buildings. Uh, so the community consultation seems like a really good idea to make sure that that's uh, lawful. Um, but she doesn't, and she talks about speaking with spirits in some of her writings, but I wasn't sure if that was part of the book or the interactiveness that she's discussing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, Min is our second reader, please. Uh, yes, I want to add some of the new perspective that I think that she explained pretty well of her transition of field to her post work to this community artist and I think it's pretty explained well enough and also I like the fact that she trying to uh, put the community engagement in the process of actually planning this artwork and but one thing that I want to add is I like the idea of community engagement that she proposed, but in the schedule of the project that she wrote, uh, the, com the part where the community engagement will be actually planned is not really clarified enough in my perspective. So I wish that it could be added in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Min. <clears throat> Any new additional or opposing comments? Uh, I just have one. Uh, really, it's just a um, point of clarification that, that I would have liked earlier on. This is just in writing. But in the project description, I, right off the bat, I, I, I did not know what urbex was. And, and it really wasn't just, it's described but not identified, if you know what I mean. So I did, I did Google it, thank goodness for Google. And then this all made sense. Uh, uh, so I, I just think at the very beginning, interactive Uber and then what is that to the layperson would have been good. All right, additional comments or opposing comments. None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Just a reminder, if you uh, to add your voice to this discussion, um, if you don't have written comments in the system, and, uh, and an applicant is scoring below that qualifying score. All right, our next applicant is Elliot, and our first reader is Caitlin. Um, I was really intrigued by the concept of a movement workshop. Um, I think that the artist did a good job explaining um, a little bit what that would look like, what that would entail. Um, I think that the the samples, the work samples that were submitted, um, the artist admits that it's kind of a, a hard thing to um, give examples of as it is a very new, like a new um, place for them right now. And I think that some more creative ideas of what their work looks like, like they included some writing samples, but this is about a movement workshop that in incorporates yoga and theater, and so maybe some examples of what yoga poses would look like or, or what a movement workshop could entail might have been helpful to kind of understand where they're coming from. And I really liked the idea of creating a place for a, a marginalized community. It seems to be something just based on the own artist personal experience that is uh, needed in the community. And I think that they have a good 
concept of what they're doing um, and good goals in, in their end result. I think everything seemed pretty straightforward with the feasibility and the um, rental fees and um, my only, I think that the um, artist has several processes in place to get feedback and buy-in from the community. And I think that that's great. Um, yeah, and I think the biggest thing that I would have liked to see more is just the examples of the artist's work. And that's it. Thank you, Caitlin. Our second reader is George. Yeah, I agree with uh, a lot of the things that my fellow panelists said. Um, parts of the application met the criteria exceptionally well. However, I would have liked to see some of the answers to be a little bit more focused. They were kind of broad, in my opinion, and tended to be a little bit vague um, across the board. Um, however, the artists did want to expand their knowledge in a creative and unique method and hitting in a, a target audience, especially in Indiana, that is very underserved um, in today's age. Um, however, uh, the applicant mentions, you know, her steering committee, people she was going to get recommendations from, they're all part of her target audience. I would have liked to see what about the people that are not affected. If they're not affected, what would they like to know about this type of transgender, uh, gay, lesbian, whatever their 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 target audience is. Um, I would like to see that a little bit on their steering committee. However, I do commend the the idea, the concept. Uh, the applicant does show sufficient knowledge in in the field in which she's trying to do this project. All right, thank you. Are there any new, additional, or opposing comments? Uh, my, my, this is Don. My only other comment, uh, positive comment, is uh, in the w whether it's separate focus group or, or in some of those um, panels that she's putting together. Uh, and if this was mentioned, uh, excuse me on that. Um, I, th I think it'd be great to engage uh, non-professional, uh, non-transgender individuals. I think it would bring a one, it helped the advocacy and the understanding. Uh, so someone unrelated to being transgender or in that transgender field, uh, and whether it's not good to mix it or whether it'd be nice to have some, some outside focus groups to, to hear from the people who are ignorant on the topic. And uh, that's my comment. Thank you, Don. Additional comments? None being noted, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Curtis Honeycutt. Our first reader is Jaleesa. Okay, so this application, I'm just gonna kind of go down each of the elements. Um, I thought that it showed a clear sort of engagement with the career trajectory, but I was unsure of how the party would contribute to the successful continuation of the career goals beyond just being some sort of kind of jolly. Um, which isn't a bad thing, but how did it connect to those career goals? Um, the quality of work, I thought, was well represented. Lots of good examples within that and showed a clear background and connection to the project. And the public benefit was the part, though, where I thought it needed, well, there was a clearly defined community that was being targeted. Um, <laughs> however, it was less clear how that was going to continue on. So I knew it seemed like it was clear that he knew he was going to talk to, but didn't have an idea of where to move it forward beyond maybe giving out bookmarks. So one of the questions 
um, that I had was how then would you use those, how would you leverage those bookmarks in some kind of way to connect with people? Um, <laughs> and then I thought the feasibility was nice. And one of the key things on that was that there was a clear understanding of that in-kind work. And I thought that was really well thought out as well as um, mentioning sort of those professional connections and those social connections being part of that strong network. So I felt like there was a good base there to make that work um, successful. <laughs> I just wanted to see that more, that trajectory, how is that gonna move forward in the long run? Thank you, Jalisa. Um, our second reader is Sherry, please. I agree with her very much so. I wanna add one extra thing. Um, he mentions that his audience uh, are those interested in grammar, I, unquote, um, which I think is a tough sell just to get those who are interested in grammar to come out. And I'd, I'd like to see more ways that he could expand that audience. The humor angle is a great angle, but how can he directly uh, get that audience in to watch him do it. Um, those, if you, you know, if you have flyers that say, I'd like to have people interested in grammar, that's, that's going to be a tough sell. So that was my major uh, addition to what she just said. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Any mm -hmm. new additional or opposing comments? Oh, I, I have one. So, uh, sure. just dealing with the budget, uh, on the expense side, uh, just, uh, to help promote it. It has a lot of connections. Uh, however, uh, and in the community, posters and flyers certainly would work. The, the hundred bucks seems kind of low for both posters and flyers, but my suggestion uh, that there there's no um, in-kind for marketing, which I think with all the connections that I'm seeing, uh, Chamber of Commerce and so on, uh, I think he ha has the, op uh, the opportunity is there uh, to leverage uh, in-kind help, uh, plus it would bolster the, the totality of what this project really is, is about to complete it all. All right, thank you. Additional comments? Um, I was just going to say, for the community engagement, it, it doesn't really seem clear how uh, the public will be able to participate other than listening to a talk or attending a party. I think um, it's kind of a, a passive participation. And I think that, um, you know, there could be some creative ways to do grammar nerd things at a grammar party that, um, you know, I think like we, it was mentioned earlier that it might be kind of a hard sell to just come to a rooftop party. Um, but if it was something that was more, active there were things to actually participate in that might be more attractive to someone to attend but i think that there could still be some more fleshing out of that um, community engagement public benefit side thank you additional comments please None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores, update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Eric Perschala. Men, you're our first reader. So what I found was really um, strength about this applicant is he clearly explained how this project will affect his professional development and how this is really needed in his uh, development. So I'm sure that this is a really clearly defined here. And also, uh, the interesting fact is he actually understands the, the value of community engagement and the deep inside this project. And the, the most interesting part is he trying to embrace not just a certain type of community or citizen, he trying to uh, build a community engagement with the various la layers of 
citizens in Indiana, which seems very in-depth community engagement that he's planning. And this is the strength that I found. And I overly think that he has a very strong uh, professional background uh, in this theme that he's trying to convey through this project. Thank you, Min. Our second reader will be Caitlin. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what she said. Um, I think that one thing would have been helpful for me was um, a, perhaps a link to the museum website or a link to the painting so that we can um, reference that because a lot of what the artist is talking about is in direct relation to those two things. And so having that represented would have been helpful. Um, like someone said earlier, you know, thank goodness for Google, um, that we could look it up if we wanted to, but it might be nice to include that somewhere. And then um, I think that it was, you know, the feasibility, it's a very clear goal is to attend, a, you know, to travel to a museum. That's something that's very black and white. So it's very easy to obtain that. Um, I think he has a, a very good vision of what he wants to accomplish and how he wants to conduct writing workshops and then, you know, be able to better teach writing to his students in the future. Thank you, Caitlin. Any new additional or opposing comments? None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Our next applicant is Jacob Zucker. George is our first reader. Yes, Mr. Zucker uh, submitted an application to finish the manuscript for a book. Um, uh, I felt like a bit there was a community community involvement is present in applicants' uh, uh, follow up of, a, of his book or manuscript. However, I would like to see more active two way um meaningful engagement from the community um it's a pretty simple upfront idea or request um he's gonna applicants gonna use the money to go do research network so on so on and so forth however you know considering the request and its purpose i feel like the guidelines were met application was very uh simple upfront um he didn't try to confuse us by any means um he has a background in in writing um yeah, I mean, I, the only thing I saw in the application was a very well-written application and, and short, or I guess shorter, which is like the feel. I didn't see uh, the community engagement part. I would just like to see a little bit more of that. However, it, it, it has its merit. Thank you, George. Our second reader will be Don. Great. George, thanks for doing a great job. Um, checking off my list. Uh, I really, only, I, uh, I, I do agree everything that George said. So I'm, I'm right behind all that. Uh, really enjoyed this application. Just two very minor um, writing uh, hiccups for me in, in the project, the explanation of the project. This is just writing the grant to help along. Uh, there, there wasn't any mention of the bookstore community engagement. Now, later it's mentioned when the question is asked, but in the beginning, it really more just talked about the project with his writing and nothing in a statement about the uh, bookstore uh, engagement piece. And then in the budget, again, minor, uh, in the budget explanation, it mentioned the cost of sending out manuscripts. But in the detailed line items, uh, there was no uh, 
number associated with sending out manuscripts. So maybe that's incorporated in, in the concept of one of those other line items, but anyways, uh, just kind of stuck out for me. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Any new additional or opposing comments? I thought that um, it would have been nice to see how he intends to fit his manuscript. Um, it's unclear. There doesn't seem to be any sort of deadline or accountability measures in place to keep him on track. And um, you know, if if the end goal is to publish, then I think getting it finalized should be part of that process. And it wasn't really stated anywhere what that deadline would look like. And and I thought that would be beneficial to know. Thank you. Additional comments? None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who's Jeffrey Barbie. Our first reader is Don. Okay, uh, just finishing up here. Um, yep, so overall for me, uh, uh, I totally understood a pretty pretty simple format. Uh, I would uh, a kudo out in that uh, this particular group, the Four Horsemen, uh, is a great group for this uh, young gentleman to have associated with on his first professional gig. Um, uh, and the fact that he uh, enjoys being both a musician and, uh, and an educator. Uh, I Googled the uh, Four Horsemen and their whole history is all about kind of going from in and out being an educating group, being a student group, being a professional group. So there's a lot of history with with where this uh, Jeffrey wants to take his career. Um, it would have been nice to, to know a little more in his goals about what are those opportunities to educate specifically. He talked about those, but I would, I would have enjoyed knowing, well, what specifically would those be? Uh, but I love the fact that as a soloist, he's totally open to collaboration um, and also being a, a, a oh, a, a a practicing artist and educator both is, is a nice combination when you can make it work. Um, now, and in one of his explanations when he was talking about the venues, I thought this was uh, just interesting. <laughs> he said that they would be performing in various venues like theaters and so on and so on, and possibly distilleries. And I'm going, well, if the thing is about distilleries and booze and drinking, it should be in a distillery. So uh, I know that was his intent, but it just was not worded that way. It was more like, well, if we can get a distillery, we will. And that's later than it explains the conversations in a distillery. So it's a little bit of the writing is where I'm going on this for the grant. Um, the public participation, mostly it is um, identified as conversation. So it have really been kind of nice to know well, what does that mean or how does that translate to a specific and meaningful uh, opportunities uh, uh, would be good just to have listed out or, or mentioned at least two of where that conversation stems from and where you expect it to go. Um, I think it would have been good to mention again, just to show uh, this dealing with the budget, the uh, totality of what the, these projects are and uh, and and so the in kind, all these venues, sounds like they're going to just let them perform there. Well, there's a value there. And, and so it would be nice to say, hey, this whole project really has this uh, uh, economic value here. Again, I did feel that in the budget, the posters uh, seemed awfully low expense uh, for any kind of quality uh, print work. 
And then my last comment is uh, dealing with the venues and the marketing and promotion. Uh, so who does that marketing? It was my question because, you know, is, are these self-presenting? Are they going out and self-presenting themselves? Which means they themselves are encumbered with marketing and communities they may not be familiar with. So that's an expense. Or does the venue supply that? And if so, that'd be another nice in-kind uh, to show the full value of this uh, of this project. Those are my comments. Thank you, Don. Our second reader is Caitlin. Um, I agree with most of what he had to say. That was a, a pretty good summary. Um, I think that overall, the application seems to be more of a rough draft. Um, he included a document that I see grant doc as part of his supporting documents. And that is extremely well written. And I feel like maybe he intended for that to serve as his application. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't offer much for his own artistic endeavors. And the, the text box that were filled in seemed to be sort of um, rushed. And whereas that document is very well fleshed out and thought out, very well written. Um, so it, the two didn't translate quite as well. Um, I do think that as far as the public benefit and community engagement goes, you know, he he has a lot of opportunities for public engagement as, as far as listening and attending these performances. Um, he states in his application that public discussion is always encouraged after a performance, uh, but he doesn't go into detail about how that happens. So it would be nice to know are these Q&A sessions or is he just assuming the audience will talk to each other after a show. Um, you know, I think doing performances in a distillery is a great idea. And I think that that should have been um, his first, like, like Don said, that, you know, that would have been a, a great thing to have that be one of the goals instead of sort of an afterthought. Um, and that would lend itself to a whole new type of community engagement um, whether it's, you know, guided tasting set to music or um, a soundtrack for the tour of the distillery. Um, I think that if there were um, some more concrete connections to these distilleries, that the artist could work with those um, people to, to coordinate something, to create something that's more of an active experience instead of just listening to music while you're having a drink, um, which is wonderful. Who doesn't love that? But um, I think that for the grant application purpose, it, it would have been nice to have that fleshed out a little bit more. Um, and and I, I agree with the the budget line items that you know, um, and that may just be a conversation that he needs to have with those venues. You know, what would you be charging us for an hour or two hours um, so that I can figure that in? So I have more of an idea of what the actual budget looks like um, because those in-kind expenses do add up and it, it would be nice to know what people were donating. Thank you, Caitlin. Any additional new or opposing comments? I do have one and it goes along with what you're saying exactly well. Um, as a really great way to have in-kind donations for this particular project would be to create drinks that would go specifically to each venue and really direct that more um, that 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 could work really well for for this particular way of working and and there's a, a lack of how that could work uh, a lack of detail thank you additional comments None being noted, I ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time.
All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Jensen Snyder. George is our first reader, please. Yes, um, initially I was kind of confused with the applicant's request, um, and it's, yeah, I really didn't get a real good understanding, and again, this could be just a personal uh, opinion of myself uh, in the aspect of I had to go all the way down to the budget to actually get an understanding of what the applicant was going to use the money for. Um, it, it seemed to be a little bit vague at first. However, I don't know if this could make sense. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. I wanted the app. I would have liked to have seen how the applicant is going to use the money to network. You know, what industry executives? Who is she spending the money with? You know, as opposed to saying I'm going to pay these these professionals in the field. Um, especially when you're requesting funds from an organization such as this, um, it, it was a little bit vague for me. Um, I do commend the the applicant though because it, it, the idea itself was a very good idea. It is a good idea. Um, she has a, a the app, I don't know if the applicant's a male or female, but Snyder does have, you know, expertise in, with children, with families, and the fact that the applicant is a full-time caregiver, it's very commendable that she's trying to, the, the individual is trying to do all this. Um, we all know as artists ourselves that um, arts are very expensive, and for the applicant to try to target the youth, uh, that was, uh, I guess it was pulling at my heartstrings, personally. Um, so it was it, it's commendable that that the applicants wanted to do an outreach to children. However, my biggest concern with this applicant or the application was the actual budget itself and where the funds are going. Um, it just it just felt a little bit vague for me. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Our next reader is Min. Uh, yes, I agree with he, what the George says, but I want to add some of the strengths of this applicants that I found that is highly aligned with her pro, uh, professional development. So this project is highly um, related to her personal development, which is pretty clearly mentioned in the application form. And but I want to add one thing that when she's mentioning about interactive performance, I wish that it would be much more clear that how she will um, drive this interactive performance in a, in what way. So I kind of want to hear more about what she defined as an interactive performance, and that will be because uh, this is highly related to uh, the level of community engagement. But also I like the fact that she's trying to expand the community engagement with her networking base and trying to develop more community, uh, trying to like bringing a lot of community base or networking base, which is interesting. And I'm sure that she's understanding the value of a community engagement, but want to be clear about some of the definitions and some of the settings of the performance, whether it's gonna be with, like vis visually how it will be happen. Thank you, Min. Uh, additional comments, new or opposing? None being noted, I'll ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments. Yeah. Let me know if you need more time. Our next applicant for review is Pat Petrus. Caitlin is our first reader. So I think that um, the, the description of the project is pretty clear. They do a good job of explaining um, that, you know, this is a, a young artist who is looking to uh, make a career out of music. And um, I think that the project will definitely help advance his career, you know, having a professional 
recording of original work is a, a great jump start to his um, sort of portfolio. Um, and I think that he explained that and how he had plans to accomplish that pretty clearly. The um, I really enjoyed the musical sample that he he included. Um, I think that the resume, the artist's resume, could use another round of proofreading. Um, that could be improved. And as for the um, community engagement and public benefit, you know, this he chose a topic that is very topical. Um, it's very buzzworthy and very, um, it's happening right now, the opioid crisis in Indiana. But he doesn't really talk about how he plans to incorporate that um, into the music. How does one write music that addresses an opioid crisis? What is part of the public benefit and the community engagement? Will there will he be partnering with substance abuse counselors, or will he be providing outreach opportunities for people to seek help? Or um, you know, is that going to be part of the performances? I think that um, that wasn't fully explained in the process. And um, it seems like whether he thinks that that's just implied or not, um, that would be something that I would like to understand more of um, so that it's not just I'm going to, you know, since he mentioned specifically what the subject matter of his music that he's writing was going to be, um, I, I think that understanding what that looks like as far as the whole project, I think that would have been beneficial to know more about that. And then as far as the feasibility, um, just I think he has a pretty small window of time set to complete a large amount of work. Studio time alone, um, anyone who's ever recorded anything, that can be pretty uh, unpredictable. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, I think he has like two hours allotted um, to record and, and that, that might be underestimated. And if so, that's an expense that will be beyond his budget. Um, so that was just one thing that stuck, struck out um, that I thought could have maybe used a little bit more thought. Thank you, Caitlin. Our second reader is Sherry. Caitlin has expressed my concerns and also the, the my admirations uh, very well, but I'd like to add one thing. Um, when he is working with the opioid theme, which is again, great, um, I'd like for him to talk, he talks a little bit about his, his venues and the artists, but he doesn't really, I, I can't really tell if he has already a public or a, a personal connection or if he's just choosing ones that are really good. But also what about uh, choosing some places that already deal with opioid abuse to be venues? How, how is he gonna connect that theme in a, in a just more manageable way for the, for the audience, for the community to, to really do something with this huge problem? And, and that's really what I'd like to see more of, um, along with what, what Caitlin's already mentioned. It's more of the, the specifics of how it will happen that's, that's the issue for me here. Thank you, Sherry. Any new additional or opposing comments? Uh, can you hear me? This is Don. Yes. Okay, I was getting unmuted off and on for a while. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say back on the budget, and, and, and it shows up uh, frequently, uh, the use of in-kind. Uh, so again, you know, these venues, are they in-kinding? What does that cost? Just to add to the, to the fullness of, of the project. But, and then the $50 for a graphic designer and 25 bucks for CD stock, that, that just seems low. And if the graphic artist is... Um, of any worth and the rest beyond 50 bucks would be in kind and it would just be good to note that all this stuff has value beyond the dollar. That's my comment. Thank you. Additional comments? None being noted, I'll ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time.
All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Rachel Glacko. Jalisa is our first reader. Um, I thought this application, I thought the idea of this was, I like, I love the idea of this, um, especially using unused spaces, which could, there could be more of that, I think, in the world. But some of the things that I had issues with and would make this maybe a stronger application were how was this applicant connecting sort of her background work to this new space, performance art, unused spaces, how does that connect to what she's already been doing? And then how does that move her forward into the future? Is she going to be starting organizations? Is she going to be doing lots of pop-ups? How is that going to connect with that? Um, <clears throat> additionally, with the quality of the work, I found it hard, and it might have just been me, to read some of that. I couldn't really see what was there. Um, so I found, that, I found that that just needed to be higher quality or maybe a link to some of those articles um, and pictures. And then, <clears throat> um, in particular, some things that really need to be clarified were things around community, you know, talking broadly about community, especially in Bloomington. Bloomington's really diverse, it's really expansive. So what kinds of communities are you particularly focusing on with those particular ideas? You know, going into unused spaces, what's the community around there and what kind of needs are they gonna have? So you need to sort of address that in the application. Um, <clears throat> be more directive on who's being engaged, how and why you're engaging them, as well as, and that kind of connects to feasibility the budget breakdown needed to be a bit more detailed. Um, additionally, what I wanted to see really was how were they going to acquire some of the rental properties for only a month? How are they gonna go about and make that case to people who own those land, that land or those properties? <coughs> and then um, how did that then connect with health and safety costs and stuff like that? Because if you're going into unused buildings, there's gonna be that health and safety issue. So those were the pieces that I thought could, make, could have made this a much stronger application. All right. Thank you, Jalisa. Our next reader is Don. Yes. So uh, uh, ditto all around there. Uh, just a couple offerings here. Uh, I do love the idea. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So it's, it's a great idea. Uh, glad it's uh, hopefully going to happen. But uh, maybe a little more on, on uh, I just had a question on the public helping with the creation, uh, which is a nice thought. But how, how is that happening? Uh, how, how is that public going to be helping with the creation? So maybe a, a sample, like, for example, yada, 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 uh, I see this happening, and this is how the public could offer help with the creation of the work and then just in terms of spreading the word and inviting uh and she talks about uh you know the traditional and newsletters and public meetings and so on so on so i i would just offer seems like it'd be kind of uh, connected maybe would um, relate a little bit back to the comment earlier about uh, knowing the community so spreading the word would be uh, i can see volunteers going almost like canvassing, go, going door to door as a street team, be, because then you are getting to know the community as well as spreading the word. Uh, and then this also just might um, activate a conversation, which could even lead to embellishing the whole concept uh, even greater. Those are my few comments. Thank you, Don. Any new additional or opposing comments? Um, I think that, you know, the concept of the application of the, you know, project is something that is really interesting and exciting, and it's something that um, kind of strikes close to the heart for what we are doing here at the Columbus Area Arts Council. So I, I do think that it's something that is accomplishable. I mean, it's feasible. It's something that the artist could accomplish. My only question. Um, was that I'm not really sure in terms of this application for this grant, um, what it really does to benefit the artist specifically. I think um, it definitely benefits the community and the public, um, but it's a great business plan. And I'm just wondering, is this something that, you know, for the artist's career, is she one is she wanting to become a performance space manager? Is she wanting to, is she approaching this 
um, as more of like a curatorial opportunity for sort of like a, a living art installation um, with these different performance aspects. Um, so I think that that was a little bit more of a question for me uh, because I definitely see how it benefits other artists by giving them a space, how it benefits the community by um, incorporating art in um, you know, unusual spaces, unclaimed spaces, um, giving buildings new life. I think that all of that is very clear and very exciting. But as for her personally, what does she get out of this? Um, that was that was something that I would have liked more on. Additional comment. I have a short comment that I really, as other uh, panelists that already mentioned that I really like the concept of this project, but in this type of the project, I think bringing a lot of community and really need to talk more deeply about using the space for the artists and how like the residents of the community and the artists can coexist and build coexistence in this society is really important issue so i hope that that can like ventilate some of the bigger issue through this project and also i hope that she should be more considered about how to bring a lot of community and actually bring an active engagement because some of the uh, engagement can be just like bringing people and talk but it actually not implement into real action or real planning process so i hope that that could be considered in this project too Thank you. Additional comments? None being noted, I'll ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. All right, we'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Scott Jans. Men is our first reader. So I, uh, in my perspective, I personally think that this application is pretty detailed and well-structured because uh, backgrounds and motivation of this applicants are pretty clear of this project, which uh, convinced me that this project is really feasible and uh, very well-structured. And also, I like the fact that not just about the end of the event of this project, but also in the process of planning this project contains a lot of resources of community engagement and in a very practical and active way. And I like the fact that um, he trying to embrace not just the teacher, but students at the same time that actually bring in a lot of opinion at the same time to bring something that is useful for not just certain people, but you, uh, they can represent the actual needs of this field, which think that is uh, basically very practical and active version of community engagement that is planning. But I want to uh, I'll raise a question about when he, when I looked through the application form, I found out that um, he will select the teacher or community uh, that can like participate or bring the opinion or feedbacks. I just want to know that what is his standard of selecting certain community or certain teacher to bring in uh, the feedback? Because I, I mean, obviously we cannot talk with every teacher or we cannot talk with every student related to this field, but I just want to know what is his standard and perspective on bringing a certain type or a certain standard of community. And I just want to hear more about the justification of, of that. Thank you, Min. Our second reader is Jalisa. Um, agree with what Min said as well. I thought that this application was probably one of the more uh, well constructed applications. Um, definitely had a good detail, level of detail, and understanding of the mission and the purpose of the project. I mean, it's very well thought out. Um, <laughs> I also thought very clear understanding of the different elements of that social network and social capital which they mentioned into this as well 
um, and like connected that to his career quite well. I think one of the things that I did comment is that there needed to be a bit more of an inclusion of the significant value of in-kind work because he talks about having people volunteer to edit the book. I mean, that takes time, that takes energy. So how are people going, like you said, be, going to be selected to do that, but also um, what's that value that they're adding to this because that's a significant value for the book. So I, that's my, my additional piece. Thank you, Jalisa. Are there any additional new or opposing comments? I think that um, the application, you know, the project itself is really cool. I love that he's getting his students involved. I think it's really exciting to see kids get excited about music, um, specifically, you know, a, um, a less than, you know, attractive, popular form of music. The oboe is not something that people generally um, like kids don't ask to take oboe lessons when they're little they um, so I think that you know if it, it's awesome that he's getting them involved and excited and um, can hopefully get others involved and excited beyond just to students however in the in the beginning of his application I felt like his um, description of the the project and his career status explanations, um, they were a little bit more anecdotal and, and not so much to the point of like kind of the nuts and bolts of what his um, application was detailing. And, and that came later. I think it was easier to understand as you get further into the application what he's wanting to do. But in the beginning, it just, it seems um, sort of like he was telling us a story instead of explaining what he was wanting to accomplish and and I think that that could have been more helpful to have the latter rather than the former additional comments any additional comments none being noted I'll ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments let me know if you need more time All right, our final applicant is Tabitha Bar Barbour, and our first reader is Sherry. Hi, um, I really enjoy the fact that this is a, a very early um, artist and that she has a really ambitious project. Um, I'm always excited to see uh, someone who's talking more about um, someone who's unknown to me, so I, I wanted to know a little bit more about who Marie Evans was um, and how uh, she fit into Indiana. So I, did, I didn't need to Google that to find out a little bit more about where that fit. Um, I'd love to know a little bit more. She, she does a really great job of detailing uh, things about her life and what she does, but I'd like to know more about how this particular project will promote her own career objectives. A little bit more about that. Um, Let's see, um, I'd like to know, uh, she, she talked a little bit about how Marie is connected to poet Langston Hughes, uh, which would be a really great way for her to connect more to um, the broader audience and how, I'd like to know more about how she gonna, if she's going to communicate with the audience, how is she gonna bring them in, how is she gonna interest them in uh, Marie if they don't already know who she is. But this, uh, but Langston Hughes would be a great connection for her to work more with on, on um, bringing those people in. Um, I'd like also to know a little bit more about how she's going to, uh, how she could work with in-kind. Is, is she connected to a particular college? How is she going to get this, the audience that she talks about? Who are these, are, are these audience? Are they already people that know about Marie? Are they people who want to know more about uh, Indianapolis, black, black movements? Who are these particular people that she's targeting to come and, and what will they get from it? 
um, where is it going to be um, as far as in kind? Is she going to be at a college? Is she going to be at a coffee house? Where is it going to be? Uh, so I'd like to, I guess I'd like to know a little bit more details about the promotion, the feasibility, and how it's going to affect her specifically in getting her from where she is now specifically up further to where she would like to be. So those are my thoughts on that. Thank you. Our second reader is George. I feel like my fellow panelists took some words out of my out of my brain here. Uh, I, I agree with a lot of um, a lot of the opinions that um, my fellow panelists said. Um, so I'll I'll mention some things that were not mentioned. Um, some of the concerns I had uh, were in the budget. Um, applicants state uh, from the get go that the description that funds will in the description that funds will be used for equipment then honorarium, donation, rental fees, as well as to others and self. Um, so I would like to see a little bit more focused uh, explanation of the funds. It seems like a, a, lot, of, a lot of money going out and not enough uh, in the bank sort of concept. Um, so I had a little concern. I mean, as Sherry said, it's a very ambitious project. Uh, it's very commendable. I didn't know who, who the figure was. I had to Google it as well. But I also feel that the essay topic was very impressive and definitely helped me in understanding why the applicant chose this figure. Um, I, I think the applicant has a very impressive resume and is involved in the community. Um, I felt like applicant demonstrated the rationale and purpose very, very well. Um, so overall, um, great application. My only hesitation would be in the, the breakdown of the funds and its usage. Thank you, George. Any new or additional or opposing comments? Uh, I have uh, two. This is Don. Uh, one, I really can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I have. Uh, I love the fact that she commented uh, at the end of everything. She's going to take the last quarter to complete the three series, but also that she's going to analyze data from her research, interviews, and events to complete a full grant report. So she's. Uh, Hopefully, it looks like she's going to be very detailed for us at the final. Um, some of the expenses uh, dealing with event space and then having national voices as panelists uh, seem a little low in the budget. And I didn't know if I really, the honorarians must be for the either local or national voices. But then what I would do, again, going back to in kind, I would say, hey, you know, what, what, what's your fee? Oh, eight hundred dollars. I got fifty. Great, I'll do it. I love your project. Well, then you want to identify seven hundred and fifty bucks as in kind. Again, just to show the full value of the project, which is a great project. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Additional comments. None being noted. Please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. now concludes the individual advancement program for the fiscal year 2020 early career advisory review panel panelists I thank you all and um, my gratitude personal gratitude for the good job you've done reviewing these applicants thank you everyone um, panelists if you would hang on for a moment um, this is the end of the public meeting, so we'll say goodbye to our guests now. Thank you for joining us. This meeting will be posted on the program webpage in the coming weeks.